Okay, hi everyone, uh, and, and welcome to my talk. This is uh, a lot different than I uh, <laughs> expected it to go, but uh, I guess we'll, we'll see how this how this works. And thanks so much also for all the volunteers that are helping out uh, getting everything organized like this. Um, so yes, uh, I'll be talking about uh, amplifying the user experience by defining user journeys, uh, and specifically focused on uh, two-sided marketplaces. Um, because that's where most of my, my experience is in. Um, let me introduce myself and see, let me tell you what I do and, and how. Um, so I, I currently am a data consultant for Snowplow Analytics. And Snowplow Analytics is an event data collection platform. Um, and in my current role, I, I help our, our users, uh, both open source and, and our, our paying clients, uh, to work with their data to ask the right questions uh, and to see how you can get the answer to those questions by implementing uh, different tracking, uh, tracking strategies uh, as well as uh, through data modeling later on. Um, so I work with a lot of different clients from all sorts uh, of, of different companies uh, with all different backgrounds. Um, so most of my talk will be uh, based on, on things I've seen there, um, as well as in my, my previous job, I used to work uh, for Bull.com, which is a, a two-sided marketplace in, uh, in the Netherlands, um, where I focused on, on the seller side of things uh, in uh, both consultancy and, and analytics. Um, so I've got a unique view on, on how all of this comes together. And from what I've experienced, most of it uh, when coming to two-sided marketplaces is just a, a shift of focus. Um, there's not a whole whole lot of, you have the technologies, they work exactly the same on any website, really. Um, but what is important is the way you, you view your, your, your users uh, and the different roles they have. So what I'm trying to do today is get you to think, um, like I said in the introduction, uh, I'd love to hear you guys' questions and your experiences. Um, I'll be asking a couple of questions throughout here uh, just to get a discussion started and get you in a way where you can think differently about uh, about your user journey of the, the specific uh, user groups. Um, so uh, what I will be talking about today, um, I'll clear up some terminology first, just so we know what we're talking about and which terms I'll, I'll be using. Um, and then I want to uh, explore the, the two different perspectives in a, in a two-sided marketplace. So how are they different in their core? Uh, what is different in, in the journey they have, um, and what's the difference in, in the questions we ask of the data, and, and is there really uh, a difference? Um, so terminology. Um, in, in Snowplow, we use two terms that you don't really see see anywhere else or not as, as broadly as this. Uh, we talk about events and entities when we're tracking uh, on, a, on a website. Um, events are, are actions, are user actions, so it can be a click, it can be a page view, something that's actively done. Um, but those events don't happen just in a, in a vacuum. There is a, a, an environment where those uh, events take place in, um, and we track those with something we call entities. Um, so say uh, a user clicks on, on, a, on a blog item. Um, we, we track a couple of things about, about that user, so you might have a, a user uh, doing that. But you also want to know what item they clicked on. So we have the event, the click, and then the environment that, that takes place in the blog item, for example. And even the, the user is an entity as well. Um, so about the blog item, what was the title? Who was the author? Uh, do we have any keywords or, or metadata uh, with that? Um, as well as the user, what do we know about the user? Was they, were, they, were they logged in? Are they a subscriber? Um, what was the local time? All sorts of things. Um, and I've seen some, some, some very cool approaches in, in two-sided marketplaces with a, a, clever, uh, a clever use of these, these two uh, objects, as it were. Um, so does that make sense for now? Not getting any questions, but I am going to assume that it makes sense. <laughs> cool. 
Um, as well, um, I'll be talking about uh, websites uh, as well as, as sellers and buyers. I'm just going to use those as, as general terms. Uh, a website can also be an app or, or whatever. Uh, and sellers and buyers can be a, a lot of things. We, we think like a marketplace, uh, like Amazon, it will be sellers and buyers. Uh, if you think like Airbnb, renters, et cetera. Um, but just to keep things short and not, not having to repeat everything over and over and over again, uh, I'll just say website and buyers and, and sellers. Um, so first, at their core, if we, we think about these two specific user groups, uh, there are a couple of terms that, that come up immediately when we think of them. Um, if we think about buyers on the, on the website, um, we think about things as, as activation. Uh, like if someone's on your web website and they make an account, what do we do to, to get them to, to actually buy something or do something? Um, same with conversion, if they made that uh, that step, how do we get them to buy what they need and buy more or whatever, and what sells well and what doesn't? Um, or subscription-based, how do we get people not to, not to churn, how do we keep people over, over longer periods of time? Um, which is all very, very uh, buyer-based. Um, if we then look at the other side, uh, where we look at the, the sellers, um, there's a different sets of uh, things we talk about. Uh, we talk about the quality of uh, a seller, like what do they sell? Is that good enough quality to be on our website? Uh, and can they have the, the same service, et cetera? Um, same with, with uniqueness. Is this uh, a seller who sells things that are completely unique to them, uh, making them a, a great add-on to our website? or is this seller number 100 for the exact same pair of shoes? Um, whereas they might have their value, but obviously different than a, than a unique seller. Um, and also uh, their value. Let's see, what, what do they contribute to our, to our website? Um, so I, I want you to think about your own website. And if you're not, Currently employed by, by a two-sided marketplace or, or whatever, just think of a website like like Amazon or Airbnb or Uber or anything. Um, if you you talk about uh, your your user groups, two user groups, um, what what comes up for you, and how would you uh, identify the the events that they might do? Um, where for uh, a buyer that obviously could be buying or sharing or liking, um, and what events would you think? Uh, a seller would do, obviously, be uh, uploading new items, uh, confirming uh, orders, sending things out, maybe uh, having some sort of some sort of action or, or marketing thing going on. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to ask the question, and I'd love to hear your answers as well. Uh, into to what you see those those two user groups do differently than than others. Um, Sure, I'm getting anything. If not, then we'll, we'll go into uh, to the next one. Um, so you have those two two groups that are, are very different at, at their core. Um, and they also have their, their different journeys on their site. Um, so for example, if you if you look at, at most of the, the landing pages out there, they'll be heavily uh, consumer focused. Um, again, looking at like a, an Amazon or an Airbnb, if you go to to their website, almost everything is, is a is a consumer thing. Uh, they make it easy to to sign up, just click here for our newsletter or click here for an account. Really easy, um, and they make it very easy to uh, get your customer service in place too. So, if they went through the landing page, they went through the sign up, and something goes wrong or they have a question. Uh, they can uh, they can find that easily there too. Um, whereas on the other side, uh, for your uh, for your sellers, there's a there's a different thing. Most sellers you have to attract in in a different way than just to your to your main site that says consumer focus. So how do you do that? What what kind of campaigns do you have going on out there? Um, same. What is important for them is uh, is a contract. If they they do sign up, uh, are there any any contracts that have to be that have to be signed? Are there any 
uh, uh, service levels they, they, they have to meet. Um, and can they do that? And, and how do you track that? Um, same with, with finance. Um, it, it, it's a different thing than, than for, for sellers or for buyers. Uh, buyers want, want to secure their finance or buy something. I just want to put in my credit card number and go. But for a seller, the whole financial aspect becomes a lot more, more important. Um, like, am I getting the money for my products? When am I getting that? And, and how much am I getting? Um, yeah, I'm seeing a question, but I, it's a little small. All right. Yeah. So, um, going back to my, my previous slide, I'm seeing some, some questions come in now, um, about events and entities, uh, that are, are user specific. So for a buyer, like adding things to a basket, yeah, that's, that's those are indeed the events you'd be thinking about. Those are very, very unique uh, to, a, to a buyer, not as much to a, to a seller where you have to, on the seller side, different, the different process of adding things to, to a website. But those are, those are some, some good examples I, I see coming in. Um, but please keep coming. Um, so for their, their journey and their different journeys throughout your, your website, um, there is a lot also that, that we can do to, to make that journey better. Um, even if we're already looking like a, a free sign up. So if we're looking at a user stitching, um, say we have a, a fresh new user we've, we've never encountered before, they have to, the, the red link, they come into your landing page. Is there a way to, to discern which, which, which role they have? Are they looking to buy? Are they looking to sell? So if you, you think about your, your website, um, can you find a way without having a, a specific sign up to, uh, to identify such a user? Um, and again, you'd probably be looking at, uh, at earlier data sets uh, where you've gathered from your, from your different users to see where they go, what to do, or which files do, do they go through. Um, so, Think about which assumptions you would make for, for either roles. Um, are we talking about, about contracts? Um, more important for, for a seller when it deals with, with financial agreements and a service lot for agreements. Um, obviously, we have those on the, on the buyer side as well. There's uh, all the uh, terms and conditions we, we all never read. Um, <laughs> they are there. Um, so, Think of, of all of those uh, when, you're, uh, when, you're, when you're getting there. Um, and then after they log in and they, you can identify the user where you have a, a good idea of uh, are they a seller, are they a buyer, then they'll add to the, to the richness of, their, of your data set if you, can, uh, if, you, if you can use whatever they did beforehand and what they do after. Uh, to see your funnels, to see the journeys they take, and to see which specific journeys they they also took, um, and use that data to um, to make the experience better for for future and, and current users. Um, so then, then to the media things, uh, data questions. Again, if, if you work with, with teams who uh, who look at the, the specific two, two groups, like, like I used to do, we had specific teams working on, on consumer data, we have specific teams working on seller data. Um, and there's obviously some, some differences in there, um, but for a lot you'll notice that you can use things both ways. Um, like many websites nowadays have, have real-time suggestions uh, because you looked at article X, maybe you're interested in article Y. Um, which is a very buyer friendly or consumer friendly uh, interface to have. Um, and obviously there's, there's a lot of learning going on about are those used and uh, what's the best way to present those. Um, but think about what can you do with that information? Uh, can you actually use that for your uh, sellers as well? No necessarily the 10 most bought things, although that might be really interesting information, but what about the 10 most searched things? 
or the 10 most searched things that aren't available on the platform yet. Um, which all comes from similar tracking and, and similar data streams. Um, but the question and the intent and the, the perspective of that is, uh, is a lot different. Um, same with funnels, uh, sign-up funnels or, or activation funnels, um, as, as well as, uh, as marketing attribution. Um, very, very consumer focused. Um, but actually, your, your sellers go through a very similar process. Um, they also sign up and they might also have specific activation goals in there. Um, again, if you have a, a, a good user entity, then you can add those, uh, those specific events or the, the specific things that, that either group does uh, in those funnels and then you can reuse them there. Um, very hot topic right now is, is fraud. Um, but we, we look at fraud detection and uh, especially real-time fraud detection. We often focus on, on financial fraud on the, uh, on the buyer side. Uh, do we have like bots or, or do we have uh, a credit card set up match or, or whatever? Um, but consumer fraud is, is just as important. Um, and there are, I've seen companies do actually use the same, the same machine learning there as, uh, as for financial fraud, uh, consumer fraud. So can we predict who will uh, not serve our, our, our sellers in, in the way that we want? Um, and, and actually that, that, is, that is definitely possible. Um, again, uh, on, the, on the buyer side, like I said, the, the real-time insights, um, conversion as well. Um, we know what, what converts well, um, but do your sellers know what converts well and, and do they know why? And can you give them insight on why? Um, and when you, you have your, your full data set, then you, you definitely, definitely can. Um, so for this, I, uh, I'd love to think about, you know, a, a product that you're either did in your past and in your future. Uh, and how can you apply that to both sides? If we, if we look at fraud, for example, um, a lot of companies are, are having some sort of fraud section, uh, especially some, some of the bigger ones. Um, and can you use what you what you learned there, what you did there, um, not just for your uh, for your buyers, but also for your sellers? Um, and if you have run into into any problems there, is there something you you, you have learned there that you can uh, that you can use for your for future uh, references? Um, so yeah, um, that was that was very short. Um, <laughs> so we only have five minutes left, so I'd like to, to open the floor for, for any questions you, you might have or any use cases you might want to uh, uh, you might want to discuss while we're while we're here. We'll give you a moment to all type things out if you if you want to. I don't see a whole lot coming in. Um, if good, then uh, I'd like you all to invite you um, to our online booth in the, in the expo hall. So if you have any questions after this, or you have any any use cases you want to you want to discuss, or uh, any strategies you you want some some information on, then reach out uh, reach out to me or my my coworkers in the, in the expo hall. Um, as well, have a look at our online event series, uh, Doing Data Right. Um, we used to do a, a lot of meetups with our open source community, which right now is a little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, so we set up an, an online event series um, where we'll be uh, empowering data teams through discussions with, with industry experts, and we'll explore the challenge they, they have faced, um, as well as what the roles are of, uh, of the data team. Uh, we'll talk about infrastructures and how to, uh, how to derive value uh, from your data. Um, yeah, so if that was it. Uh, Ninka, um, sorry, uh, there is a question from the audience, uh, from Sophie. Uh, can you give an example of how Snowflow works with companies in two-sided marketplaces? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, like all of this is, is based on, on the work we've done with, with different companies so far. Um, most recently, we've worked with a, a food delivery site where 
on one side you have consumers ordering uh, ordering their meals the other uh, side you have restaurants um, preparing those meals and, and delivering them um, and and what they they very cleverly did um, is define their uh, their user entity in in such a way that it was uh, flexible enough to give to use for both both kind of users. Um, obviously, you can always put in a in an entity like, is it uh, just a, a yes no? Is it a a, a buyer? Is it a seller? Uh, and and by doing that, uh, they especially looked at their at their sign up flows uh, both ways. So um, how do you get your new uh, your new buyers? But also at the same time and with the with the same tracking actually. Uh, they looked at how they got their new uh, how they got, got their new restaurants in, uh, and that provided them with with some very unique insights. Um, obviously, they they have a whole lot to to work with nowadays, uh, with a lot of different changes. Um, but because they were so flexible, and uh, they were they were able to to switch really quickly and to see what rest, both restaurants needed for uh, to be activated and to to get delivering as soon as possible uh, as well what, what was important for uh, for buyers there um, so yeah that was that was one example but there's 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 many more there um, I do see another question uh, I just want to understand how snowplow can be used with a tool like power bi uh, I'd love to answer that question, uh, but we only have a minute left, uh, so that's going to be really short. Um, but I'm sure there's a way to reach out to me after this. 